welcome to our webinar. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Monica McMahon. I'm the Director of Marketing at Optico Network. And today we are here to talk about duplicate device IDs. So here we go. Duplicate device ID, what is it? So in this example that we're going to use here today, um, this could be a big network, it could be a small network, the size of the network is really irrelevant. Um, but basically you have two different devices. So in my example here, I have a temperature sensor and just a generic controller. And both of them have device ID 1121. So um, very likely in this example, we'll say that con the controller is supposed to be device 1121 and the temperature sensor is supposed to have a totally different uh, device ID. That, and device ID is, a synony is synonymous with BACnet ID. Um, and you, it's that device identifier. So it, it may be that they copy, someone copy and pasted all of the um, configurations from one subnet to another, or uh, this is a, a preset, 1121 probably isn't a preset, but that is isn't often a way that this happens. You have a device that comes with a preset and someone forgot to change it. Or if someone went away for lunch, they knew that they were going through the list of device IDs and they forgot that they had already done that one and were supposed to go on to 1122 and gave a second device, 1121. Lots of different reasons. Um, but basically what happens when you have this scenario is you have your main server and it will send out any message, in this example of who is, saying who is 1121, or maybe just a global who is, who are all the devices out there. And they will probably both respond, but whichever one gets there first, the main server, the BMS is going to go, okay, you are device 1121, and it won't listen to the other, the other um, response that it's getting. So here we have the temperature sensor is getting that um, 1121, and the controller is going to be pushed aside and they're not going to know that that's device 1121 as well. But this is not forever. What's going to happen is the next time a WHOIS goes out, if the, temp the controller manages to get a message in there first and say, I'm 1121, then that device can be registered with the BMS as device 1121. And so there's going to be some confusion because of that. So what is an I am? It might be a little bit confusing, but it's not the end of the world. It becomes a lot worse when it's looking for things like a present value. So potentially it's trying to ask for the current temperature from the temperature sensor. But the controller responds. And in this case, in my this example that I'm using, it might be asking for the present value of a specific object ID. Maybe it's asking for object ID 27. And the controller also has an object ID 27. And so it's saying, well, the present value of object ID 27 is 80. The BMS is thinking, oh, the temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is way too warm. And so then it's going to go and cool the room. But it thinks that's the temperature of the room where the temperature sensor is. So it's going to cool a different room. So now you're getting uh, complete confusion, and very likely that 80 isn't even a temperature. It may be some other unit or value. So you can see how this can get really, really confusing. And this can go back and forth, and maybe um, five minutes later, it'll ask again for the present value, and it'll say, oh, the present value is now 68, because it's really cool in this room, um, because we've been cooling it, or we've been cooler, or you're going to get tenant complaints. And so then it's going to go, oh, no, don't now heat it again. And then it's going to get the CD again to cool it. And you're going to have this back and forth constantly. Uh, and you're going to have unhappy tenants. You're going to be using more energy than you need to. And when you're brought in to try and fix this problem, it's going to be really, really hard to find. So how do you find it? How do you identify it? Well, um, there's a few different ways. If it's a graphic that you're pulling, so I use the example of a present, um, a present value, but there's lots of other examples. Maybe it's pulling a graphic, turn log. So you might see a graphic that looks a bit like this. This is a, a nice visual representation of what I had just said, of that getting, um, pulling the temperature that's 67 and then pulling the temperature that's 80 back and forth. Um, so if you see something like this, it's an example where maybe you're getting um, information from the two different uh, devices, and uh, you might have been something to look at. It's very hard to know, though, because maybe you just have something crazy going on in that room. So that is 
pretty much the main clue and the main way that people find these on, on sites today. The other way is it is possible in Wireshark. It can take a couple hours. Um, we know you don't all have a couple hours to find this, but if you um, go through and you, if, if you have a, an idea of which two devices it might be or which device ID it might be, you can filter for that in Wireshark. And then you can see if under that device ID, you're having um, maybe two different vendors come up, devices with different vendors come up on the same device ID or um, IP addresses, MAC addresses. So you can compare that they might be two different devices. If you don't know which ones they might be, you're going to have to do that work manually, and that can be really tough. And of course, um, we do have a way to do this in Visual Backnet. So if you take that Wireshark file and you upload it into Visual Backnet, or you're using Visual Backnet site monitoring, you are going to be able to go to our duplicate device ID diagnostic check. Um, in this case, you can see that we've identified six of them. And you'll notice, for those of you who might know Visual Backnet, you'll know that our diagnostic checks are put in order of criticality. So having a duplicate device ID is really, really high on our list of critical problems. So it's something that you're going to want to fix right away, and it will hopefully solve a lot of your problems. And if you click into that in Visual Backnet, you're going to get information about exactly what device ID it is that's duplicated. And we also come across triples and quadruples, um, so hopefully that doesn't happen. And then as you drill down into it, you're able to see which subnets it's on. Um, in this example here, we have six devices that are on two different subnets. So someone's just copied all of the configuration and forgotten to update the device IDs. That is it um, in less than a 10-minute webinar today. Thank you so much. We look forward to you joining us on our next webinar. And go find those duplicate devices and get rid of them.